our live, our first Wednesday Q&A live with Borino here on Rockstars is on the way. Welcome Rockstars, you're Coach Borino with you. Wasn't that a great song? I love listening to that song. I'm going to use it in one of my videos sooner or later. It's good to have you. You're Coach Borino. Welcome to my Borino Worldwide Marketing Headquarters. We're going to spend, I don't know, maybe 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, depending how long this will be fun and how many questions I can answer for you. But this is our first one after a long break. I took four weeks off and it was lovely. I'll tell you all about it. You probably been following the videos and know what's going on. So here's what's going to happen today. Uh, you are watching this exclusively on the Rockstars, the new Rockstars. You guys who have just joined us, welcome. This is a fun group. We post here questions, requests for roleplay partners, tips, ideas, my videos. I answer a bunch of questions. This is where we hang out. This is our private little community where we grab a cup of coffee at least once a day and hang out and do fun stuff like these broadcasts once a week. So this is what we're going to talk about today. It's September. That means you have pretty much three months and a little bit more left to close the fourth quarter. God damn, the time flies, doesn't it? Jesus Christ, we were just packing for the summer vacation. Here we are in September. Anyway, this is an important junction where a lot of agents will go on mental hiatus. A lot of sellers will probably think this is not a good time to sell. There's a lot of shifts that will be happening and it will happen in two ways. One shift will happen where people just throw their hands in the air and says, fuck it, this, the best is over. I'm not going to do much now. I'm going to wait. And it goes both for clients and for, for agents. But there'll be a smaller group and I call them the rock stars, right? You guys who are eager, who are hungry, who are committed who want a good lifestyle, who want to build a good lifestyle, profitable business. And you will see an opportunity because if the field has thinned out where there isn't as much competition, what it will require is to connect with the potential leads, with the sellers on a different level. And we're going to talk about it today. And I'm going to show you an opportunity right now, some stats and some numbers and some proof this really is a good time to do it. Now, I don't have magic answers. None of the stuff I teach you is easy and none of the stuff I teach you is a magic bullet. You know, the magic pill you swallow and suddenly 20 sellers show up at your office. I don't have those. It does require good old fashioned hard work. So if you're looking for shortcuts, if you're looking for magic answers, if you hope and believe that it can be safe and easy, it's not. I've been doing this for 20 years. I still haven't found a way that would be safe and easy because think about it this way. If it was safe and easy, everybody would be doing it. Everybody could be doing it and you wouldn't be making the money you're making five, six, eight, ten thousand $10,000 per transaction. You know what I mean? It would be like selling shoes at Payless. It takes you 20 minutes to get up to speed and you're up and running, earning eight bucks an hour. Fuck that. The opportunity you have here is if you're willing to put in the work, like I was talking about in the video, you can architect the lifestyle any way you want it. You have total freedom to set up how much money you're going to make, how many clients you're going to serve, how helpful you're going to be, and what kind of freedom you're going to reap from your work. Now, the price you're going to pay is work. It's not going to be comfortable. What I teach is not complicated. I like simple, but what I teach is not easy because real estate is not easy. Any business you run, whether it's my business, your business, anybody's business, if you want to make profit, if you want to serve people, be helpful, touch people's lives on a profound basis like you, you do, all of you do, there is some emotion involved. There is some discomfort. There is some blood, sweat and tears you got to put into it. Okay. Letitia. I'm going to answer your question first because it's a really good one. It kind of encompasses what we're going to talk about today. You want to get listings and leads quickly. Right now, stick around. I will show you exactly how to do that. Cool? Not just to Letitia, but everybody. But Letitia is asking, how do you handle feasibles using listing smart, list smart, which are listed in the MLS? If there is an official agreement, written agreement, written contract between the seller and a broker, whether this is a discount broker, whether this is one of those firms that just put in the MLS for 99 bucks, 199 bucks, there is nothing legally, technically, officially you can do without violating your license agreement. You know what I mean? It would get you in trouble. You cannot solicit other people's listings, regardless of what the other listing is all about. And if it's just, fuck it, we'll just put it in MLS and that's it which is a shitty deal. We both know that most of those properties never sell. It's not good for the seller, but there are times where seller needs to experience it, where there's nothing you can do or say that would persuade them. They need to go through the experience. Does that make sense? So be careful. There's nothing you can do from a marketing standpoint while they're listed with this company. If there is a listing agreement, stay away. Now, that doesn't stop you from previewing the property, doesn't stop you from having a conversation with the seller, connecting with the seller, not soliciting, but just getting to know them, 
chatting with them. That's absolutely cool, and I encourage you to do that. There is no violation in that. You're previewing property, you're communicating with the seller, nothing wrong with that. Why is that important? Because most of these properties at the end will not sell. We already know that. They will not sell. So if you already have a relationship, if they remember you, if you connected with them, if you were cool with them without soliciting, without prying, without trying, without convincing, you have a much better chance of locking that listing later. Because that contract will expire sooner or later. And once it does, who do you think has a better chance to build trust with the seller, build connection with the seller, get the appointment with the seller and get the listing? Somebody who comes out of the blue, out of nowhere, or somebody who has been already communicating with the seller, who has been cool to them, who they remember. So that would be my suggestion. Cool? That's what I would do. And keep in touch. Yes? Roxy wants to know, what is the name of the piece of equipment you recommend for recording phone calls? I encourage you to record phone calls, by the way. Record your practice session. Record every call, every interaction, every presentation you have. It will make you better. It will get you so much better. Listen to yourself. First time, oh man, I heard myself talking to a seller. It was a prospecting call. Almost jumped out of the window. It was so bad. But then remember, I was like Borat, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was, ah, I ask him, you want to sell house? Good, it's okay. Oh, very good. That was me. No joke. Some of you older <laughs> seniors will remember the show Perfect Strangers. Remember Belky? I sounded just like Belky. That was actually my nickname. So record yourself. Get one of those recorders. I will actually show you the one I have here. If I have it handy, I certainly do. This is called H1. Zoom, this is the one I use. This is a professional level, it will set you back about $100, $120. You can get it on Amazon. This is an overkill. You don't need anything this fancy. This has a couple of mic plugs and it has an audio out and it has a the SD card. It records superb quality and you can plug it into your equipment, which is great, but you really don't need this. If you have the money for it, that's fine. But if you go on Amazon and search just a digital recorder, within a $20, $30 price range. That's all you need, just a small pocket digital recorder. I don't like the app you have either on your um, smartphone or on your Galaxy, whatever you use. It's not the same thing because now you have to focus on that phone, launch the app, do all kinds of crazy shit. It gets you distracted. It's much easier and simple the moment you start your practice session or the moment you get on the phone or the moment you knock on the door or the moment you sit down with the seller at the listing presentation to have the summer boom, just hit the record. It is not to record them. It is not important what they're saying. What you want to focus is, how do I sound? Do I sound confident? Do I sound competent? Am I in control of the conversation? Am I connected with the seller or do I sound scripted? Am I too high, aggressive, pushy, going too fast, anxious, which is sometimes normal when we're nervous? Or am I too low, needy? Like me, like me, like me, please, 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 please. You know? Am I too mellow? Am I matching the pace and the tone of the client or the person, the prospect I'm talking with? That's what you want to listen to. Look for mm's and ah's and like and oh and maybe and I think and frankly and honestly and all these expressions, all these terms that weaken your language. Pay attention to those and start eliminating those. But also don't beat yourself up. When I started recording myself, holy shit, I had to drink alcohol just to be able to listen to this. Uh, the purpose is not just to focus on all the bad and wrong. Although you will be surprised because what you think the conversation sounds like and what it actually sounds like, two very different things. But what it will help you see is also or hear the things that you do well. Because I guarantee you, I promise you, there are already some things you're doing well already. There are already some things that you say verbally or non-verbally, consciously or unconsciously, they already connect with people. They already communicate well. So emphasize those, work on those, okay? So that is the recorder. Jump on Amazon right after we finish. Get one of those little suckers. You will be surprised how quickly you will get better at being a confident, connected communicator. And by the way, if you really want to accelerate it, then I have an invitation for you. We're going to do the confident communication class here in Washington, D.C. October 3rd and 4th. We only have, and I can show you actually, this is what we got left. These are the tickets. There is just a handful left. You're going to get one of these in the mail. Come join me. This is going to be a live workshop where that's all we're going to do is make sure you prospect like a rock star. You connect with people like a rock star with good qualified leads. 
how you communicate, the words you use, the nonverbal communication. Do you come across as confident, connected, high status, competent agent? That's what we're going to focus on. Day one is going to be prospecting, calling high probability leads, visiting, then we're going to role play the actual visits to FISBOs, to expires, any type of high status, high probability lead. Then we're going to practice follow up. What happens once you have a lead? We're going to practice that as well. How do you transition from a standard pleasant conversation, dialogue, into setting up listing appointments? We're going to practice that. Third part will be objections. You're going to get some objections. People will throw some stuff at you. We don't know what we're going to do. Just send us your information. We already have an agent, all that stuff. I'll show you how elegantly you can solve these. Many times prevent them in the first place because I'll show you what triggers them. So this will be day one. Prospecting, follow-up, objections, communication. On day two, we're going to work on your listing presentation. So that's going to be a complete arc from the moment you lock in a lead to following up, to setting up appointment, all the way to what do you do when you sit down with them on a listing presentation. How to deliver a 30-minute super powerful listing presentation like a rock star so that at the end, you're going to walk away with not just a contract, but a good listing, good price, good commission. Now, to make it interesting, we're going to have a couple cameras on you. So you will not only observe how you sound, the words you use, but also your body language, your posture, your eye contact, all these elements that make confident communication that make the are differentiating factor between getting a listing or not getting a listing. So if you watch the Olympics, there were three medals, right? There's gold, silver, and bronze. In real estate, no such thing. It's either one or a zero. You either win or lose. There's no in between. You either get the listing and you're going to sell it, get paid, or you not get the listing. There's no second place. There's only first loser. So you must deliver your A game and your communication is the most critical component to this all. Because if you communicate confidently, if you got this down, you're going to prospect better. You're going to prospect more effectively. You're going to follow up more effectively. You're going to convert more. You're going to get more listings. You're going to get paid more. You're going to have better lifestyle, more all the money and all the freedom that you want. But that's the critical element. That is the junction where all of those meet, whether you take online leads, email, uh, you run ads on Facebook, or you do the traditional active prospecting. The source is not important because at the end, they must like you, they must trust you, and they respect you. So that's what we're going to work on. If you're interested, the URL is topconfidence.com slash live, or just email me, borino at expiredplus.com, or I'll post a link in the comments. One way or another, connect with me. I would love to have you here in DC, but this is something I cannot teach over the video. This is not something I cannot write a book or send you something. You got to be in the room with me. We're going to only take 50 people where I'm going to walk around constantly. We're going to work on it constantly. You're going to try it over and over and over and over until it becomes a second nature. Until picking up the phone is no big deal. Until talking to for sale by owner or any high status, high confident lead is no big deal. You will know exactly what to say, what questions to ask, how to connect with them, and how to convert them into an appointment. And then you will know what to do once you get that appointment. How to segue, set up status, frame. You're going to learn all these advanced communication techniques that influence people. No closing, no manipulation, no pressure. I hate those. I suck at those too. You already know that. All right, so that's the huge pitch to let you know it's coming up October 3rd and 4th here in DC. Lovely, would be lovely to have you. You can explore the city. We're going to be working on Monday and Tuesday. So if you want to come the weekend before, check out DC. You will be about five miles away from the White House, from everything in town. Good time to visit. October, first week of October is a great time to visit. All right, so that's that. Topconfidence.com slash live is the URL. Let's go to more of your questions. I'll be there. I need your help, says Janice. Would love to have you, Janice. Outstanding. Make sure you connect with us. Sign up. Get your tickets. We'll set you up. Cool? Yeah, David says the class sounds awesome. It really is. And once you see yourself on the big screen, you will be amazed. Same thing. How certain things you need to improve. You may not be aware of. Like I did certain things. One of the things I did, for example, that was one of the mistakes I discovered once I started recording and doing this process, is I would put my hand in a pocket and I would turn slightly sideways. And it's a little thing, but when you start noticing the interaction, it feels different. It suddenly closed up. And I did that subconsciously because there was an element of insecurity that I carried with me. And some of it was because of my language. You know what I mean? So I would do that. So I eliminated that. Suddenly I opened up. I was more open. I was more connecting with the client. So little things like that you will start noticing. Or little nervous signals that we send sometimes when there is tension and frankly, if there's $8,000 on the line, you, of course you're going to be a little nervous. Absolutely. I would be too. And I was at the beginning. 
until I get the hang of it. But by practicing and practicing the right stuff, you will notice a big difference very quickly. That's why I do it in two days, because it's going to be intense, rapid, over and over and over and over until you get it, until you don't have to think about it anymore, until you don't have to recite scripts and lines. You turn all of that into a pleasant conversation, connected conversation. Well, not only you feel different, but the person you talk to feels different. That's the whole point. So come to DC, shoot me an email, shoot me a PM reach, one way or another, call us 800-573-8492, email me, borino at expireplus.com, and we'll talk, okay? Ray size a question. Borino, my company provides me with just sold cards. Any suggestion on how to use them creatively? Really good question. I am a big fan. Direct mail is coming back big time. And I think it's because we all got burned out with the electronics, especially emails, right? Are you like me? What's the first thing you do in the morning? You go through the, I get about 180 to 250 emails a day. Tons of emails. Now, some of them I subscribe and it's interesting, like you subscribe to my emails, right? But some is nothing but shit, junk. So the first thing I do is delete, 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 delete. We are overwhelmed. So direct mail is replacing a lot of that, a lot of the communication. It be, it's becoming, again, a powerful media. No filters, no do not call lists. It's going to get through. So I like Just Sold. But to make it work, Raisa, here's what I would recommend. Set up an area where you're going to mail. So let's say if you do every door direct or whatever, every door direct would be my choice because it's so inexpensive. I would hit an area, maybe 500 homes, maybe 1,000 homes. Okay? Now, if you can use a data provider like Cole or there are others where you can track down who you're targeting. And I would hit it in three ways. First, I would blast the postcards. That would be step one. Now, make sure on the postcards it's a very strong, clean, easy to understand call to action. Many postcards, and I actually have one I wanted to show you. Hold on, let's see if I have it handy. I meant to do a video on it. No. You know, I got back from vacation and the pile of mail, like you won't believe. All right, I'll, I'll make a video about it and I'll show you a little bit later. But the problem with the postcard, it was nice, printed on a nice paper, great photographs, eye catching, good hook, but very weak call to action. So be specific. Who are you talking to? Homeowners, right? What do you want to offer? Maybe just a free CMA. Home values are going up. Find out exactly what is the most a qualified buyer would pay for your home right now. Something like that, but be specific. And then how to get it. And I would offer a couple of options. Maybe go to a website and call a phone. The difference is website's going to get more hits, but the quality of the leads will not be as good. The phone calls, you won't get many, but those that do call are usually very good quality leads. So step one, you send the postcards out. Step two, I would door knock the neighborhood. Take a little flyer, promote the same property we just sold or I just sold or whatever the circumstances are. Nice call to action on the back, free CMA for the homeowners. And I would talk to the neighbors. Okay, so that'd be step three. I mean, step two. Step three, I would call. I would follow up and call with everybody. Hey, we sent those postcards. We, let, we helped uh, Jack and Mary, your neighbors over on Oak Street. Uh, would you happen to know anybody else? We have a couple more buyers who would love to buy a home in the neighborhood, but we're short on properties. Would you happen to know of anybody who may be considering selling this year or selling within six months or whatever time frame you want to set? And then how about you? Have you thought about living somewhere else? What if buyer walks in tomorrow, suitcase full of cash, they're ready to buy your property for a good price? Have you considered selling? Get in a conversation. Out of 20, 30, 40 homeowners, there should be at least one good lead you should encounter. That at least was my numbers. Now, your numbers will be very, will, will be different. They will vary, obviously. But mine, after about 20, 30 people I talked to, at least one would either know somebody, would recommend somebody. Oh, yeah, Jack down the street, they're thinking about selling. Or they are thinking about selling. So use a three-pronged approach. It's more powerful than just blasting out postcards. You may get results from postcards, but this will exponentially increase the, the number of responses you will generate if you incorporate all three. Okay, cool. All right, Roger says you love it. All right. Kevin has a really good question. Kevin Ryan posted, hi, I'm agent in Charlotte, North Carolina, but I'm in the Army Reserve and I was away for three months for military duty. Now I have no good leads and I'm nervous jumping back in the business. Will coming to DC help ease my anxiety? Kevin, yes, it will. Here is a guy who knows how to operate guns to kill people. <laughs> Tough guy, I would assume, right, Kevin? You don't strike me like a dude who is a pushover. And yet, everybody gets nervous. Everybody gets anxious. One of my first clients was a, a Special Forces unit member, former member. 
and was nervous about talking to strangers. Will this alleviate your anxiety? It will. Because the anxiety comes from not knowing exactly what to say, how to say it, who to talk to, how to generate leads in the first place. So now imagine you know how to approach a for sale by owner. Where are the possible objections they're going to throw at you? What are the best questions to ask them? How to interact with them? So it's not a sales pitch. It's not a shtick. It's a conversation. If you notice the stuff I teach you guys, have a conversation with human beings. Because at the end, the most powerful way to influence somebody, to connect with somebody, is one human being helping another human being. And if you know how to do that, if you have the skills and tools and the right mindset, then it becomes easier. With that being said, Kevin, I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass. This business will never be easy. There will always be some anxiety. There will always be some tension. It's just not easy. And the reason it's not easy is because you're dealing with people who are handling big decisions. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of money on the line. And they, there's very little trust. It's because, unfortunately, our industry doesn't have the best reputation. But it's also very, very rewarding for two reasons. Number one, of course, you can make a lot of money. The potential, the income potential here is at the level of doctors and attorneys, high-end, high-paid professionals. That's the cool part. And the second, of course, is being cool and helpful and help people with something important and significant. And my job is to help you and show you how to do that. Communication is a big part of it. So yes, I believe the class would help you with the right mindset and with your military training. A lot of my success stories come from either police, military, or teachers, which is interesting. So yeah, I think it would help you. Besides, one thing I wanted to tell you about the class, as with everything I offer, every class you get from me, every product you get from me, 100% money back guarantee. So here is one for the class in DC. You come, you take it, you spend two full days with me. If you follow what I teach you, if you execute what I teach you, and if you at any point feel like this is not producing the results I expected, I'm not getting more listings as a result, I'm not getting paid more, I would like to have my money back. You have full 60 days after the class to simply call us or email us. No hard feelings. We will refund your ticket fully. The entire investment for the ticket will be fully refunded back to you. That's how confident I am this will help you. That's how confident I am in my skill to teach you, to explain and to guide you, and in your ability to absorb it and apply it to your business. Cool? Will that alleviate your nervousness coming to DC? Come on down. We'll have a good time. Not to mention, I'll be there on Sunday night and we're going to have a couple of drinks and talk. You can ask questions. You have full access to me for two and a half days which in itself will be kind of fun to hang out with you rogue stars. But I also have to keep the group small so that it's manageable for me to walk around and work with every one of you. So you can stop me, you can ask questions, we can try different things, I can demonstrate things. And then we record it and you can watch it on cameras. Yeah? Sweet. All right. Janice has a really good question. What do we need to be prepared for the class, the homework assignments? And there are not that many. We'll go out where I'll give you a little bit of an outline what we're going to work on. You will get some dialogues just to kind of warm up. But there is not a whole lot. The only thing I would, I would recommend you bring is for day two, bring an actual CMA. Bring an actual uh, presentation for a specific property. This can be your house. This can be your friend's house, uh, this could be a property you're about to list or you just listed, whatever. What I want is an actual property with actual comps because we want to simulate the presentation as close as possible to the actual presentation. So I would like you to bring your computer, I would like you to bring your phone, and I would like you to bring the presentation. Now whether you use iPad or you use paper presentation or computer, doesn't matter, but bring it in a format that we can use in a class. Also, the second thing I would like you to bring is actual leads you have. These are leads you have already generated, Janice. This could be Facebook, expires, doesn't matter, sphere of influence, whatever lead where you think these people may be doing something within the next three months, six months, 12 months, whatever. Because we're going to practice, we're going to actually call them. See, we did this exercise last year during a class. And I challenged the group, and that was a small group too. We had about, I don't know, 30 people or so, and I have this whole thing on video. I could actually show you a little bit from that class. Let me show you a little bit of a clip. But I challenged the group. I said, how many appointments can you get in 10 minutes? And in 10 minutes, there were five appointments. Five appointments generated just by using some simple strategies. I got people on the phone to actually do it. Now you can see the cameras there. We're going to follow you. We're going to uh, watch you, see how you work. And I'll be right there with you working on all this stuff. Cool? All right, 
let's see what we got. Oh, here's something I wanted to show you. And this is the opportunity I was talking about. This is from my friend's uh, group. Great group, by the way. Nick and Tristan run an awesome group. If you're not a member, I highly recommend it. My second favorite group on Facebook, Lab Codes Agents. Great stuff, great resource, tons of great people there, very motivated. But watch what Roy posted yesterday. So I know that some people hate calling fizzballs, me included. Natural, a lot of people feel that way. Even though the numbers show the most of these list with an agent. So I had a little time to kill today and went back to fizzball leads I received during my $49 trial with Espresso Agent back in December and January. Out of 100 leads, I checked 94 of them wound up listing with an agent. Let's do that again. Out of 100 leads, 94 listed with an agent. So if you think that fizzballs are pain in here, here is further proof that most will list with an agent. I did not start keeping track of which one have sold until the last 30. My bad. Of the last 30, listen to this, 21 have sold. You hear me? 21 out of 30 were already sold. Somebody's already getting paid. Out of 194 were listed. So what does that mean? Fizzbos and expireds are the best sources of quick leads. If you need listings right now, if you need to get your business, if you're broke, like I was talking about in the video, if you have less than $10,000 in your checking account, you're fucked. And it's just a matter of time, you're asking for trouble. All you need is, God forbid, a small medical emergency, like I busted my tooth. I have a giant hole in my mouth. They're gonna need to put an implant there and a crown and a whole thing. Woohoo, can't wait. That fucker's gonna set me back about four grand. And I have insurance, I pay my own insurance. It's still gonna be expensive. So if you have less than $10,000, your car breaks down or something happens with your house or whatever. You gotta get your act together. You gotta get back on track. That's the beauty of this business, that it doesn't take months and months and months and months. This can happen very, very quickly. Think about it. It's the December, January leads listed and sold. Whole bunch. Most of them listed and a whole bunch already sold. Out of 30, 21 were sold. So if you take the whole 90, what, at least half already sold. Great opportunity. Fizzballs are clueless. They don't know what to do. They think they do, but they don't. Work them. Find them, and you can start with free resources, fizzbo.com, craigslist.com, on Craigslist. There's a whole bunch. Or pay for a service like Espresso. I like Espresso. If you want to try it, use the code BORINO, and you're going to get two months for 49 bucks. Free trial. See if it works for you. But regardless of where you get these leads, know that they need your help. That they end up selling with an agent. They can't sell on their own. Eight transactions out of 100 in the United States this year are FISBOs. They're clueless. They just don't know it. So with the right approach, and what is the right approach? How do you approach FISBOs? First, email them. Can I stop by? If I could bring a buyer, could we work something out? Would you work with an agent? Super easy, super simple. Go preview the property, have a two-minute chat with them, bring something helpful, a list of websites where they can advertise, a flyer template, any type of resource or information that they would find helpful. No marketing. Just something cool, something that shows goodwill. Because now you're tipping the scale of the law of reciprocity. Now they owe you something. Now you're positioned as an advisor, not a sales, sales schlep, sales pitch man or woman. Be cool with them, ask questions. Is there anything I can do to help? Are you holding open houses? Would you like to borrow my open house signs? I'll get you three, four open house signs. You can do an open house this weekend. See if it works. Better yet, why don't I hold one for you? I mean, there are 10, 12, 15 different things you can do to help them genuinely help them and then keep in touch follow up with them that's the secret because you saw it within the 60 90 days listings 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 now who do you think the fizzball will list with ask yourself that an agent who comes in guns blazing reciting some script that they found online from some coach convincing the seller or somebody who's cool who's high status who's helpful who smiles is a good time pleasant interaction and who is absolutely helpful who provides answers, who provides tips, who is there to connect with them. That's a no-brainer. You get me? So work FISBOS. If there are FISBOS in your area, some agents are loaded with cash because of that. I want you, my students, to be part of that. Okay? Now, if you want a system, if you want to have it step-by-step-by-step step step with all the marketing, all the resources, just get the FISBORINO. 
I mean, I don't want to turn this into a pitch for courses and products and whatever, but it's my job to help you. And I know that if you use a system where you don't have to think, you don't have to uh, come up with all that stuff where it's already done for you, just copy, paste it, push a button, go, it'll make it faster and easier for you. So get Fizborino, it's Fizborino.com. Very inexpensive, less than 400 bucks, I think, something like that. Super easy to get. I will coach you, you will get an implementation session, I'll get you up and running. You can start picking up Fizbos quickly. Está bien? All right, there come video, of course, you get videos where I walk you through the system. I will show you how to have dialogues with Fizbos, how to handle their objections, how to differentiate yourself because there are other agents who work them, all that good stuff. All right, Carla says, great tips. Just purchased 48 Fizbo from Landvoice yesterday, ready to call after this. Awesome, get them, get them. Pleasant conversation, go see them in person if you can, Carla. Nice and easy. Use a technique, and I'm gonna teach you a technique that works really well with both Fizbos expires and pretty much any seller. It alleviates fear and the fear that most sellers have, and again, goes back to the reputation we have as an industry, but I uh, almost knocked my computer now. See, I tried to be casual, almost went whole thing down. Here it is. The biggest fear they have is that you, because they don't know you yet, they don't trust you yet, will be just like every other salesperson, wasting their time, pitching them something, talking about themselves, trying to persuade them, trying to convince them, doing the salesmanship, you know, the typical sales stuff, using some bad scripts. People don't want to be sold. You and I don't want to be sold, right? We don't like to be sold. We like good stuff that works. We like to buy stuff. We just don't want to be sold. Same with your prospects. So what you're going to use is a strategy called time constraint. And here's how it works, Carla. When you approach the for sale by owner, one of the things you say, would you mind giving me a quick 10 minute tour tomorrow? So the time constraint is embedded in that question because now in their mind, they quickly shift from all oh, another salesperson to cool, 10 minutes quick, I can get that done. So I'll be in and out quickly. But it also establishes your position as an important busy agent. Because what do most agents do? They spend an hour blabbing away, they're wasting the seller's time, they're talking about themselves, they do most of the talking. Where you, as a high status agent, you're busy. You have other clients. They need to qualify to you. It shifts the frame. It reframes that now you come in with an attitude, I'm here to help. You seem like a nice person enough. Let's see if we like each other, Let's see if we trust each other. Let's see if I can be of help. As opposed to, what would it take in order for me to list with you today? Back, 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 please, 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 back, back, back. You don't want to do that. Fuck that. Besides, you don't know if you're going to help them until you qualify them. So now they qualify to you. No fakery, this is not a, not a manipulation. This is genuine, authentic. Because if you come from the heart, authentically willing to help, but not being sure whether you can, suddenly the dynamic changes. So embed the time constraints, same thing with expired. Let me stop by for a couple of minutes just to say hi, drop off some information. That's all you gotta do. Then you have a little conversation with them. If you feel they're ready for a listing appointment, and some of them will be, you invite them to your office. Set up an appointment, next day, the following day, whatever, as soon as possible. Most of them will, you, will require some kind of follow-up, at least a little bit of follow-up to develop the connection and trust. And that's okay because you saw the numbers, at the end somebody's gonna list the property. Somebody's gonna get that listing, why not you? Okay, so patiently follow up every seven to 10 days, phone calls, emails, mail them something. Now the Fisborino of course comes with a whole bunch of stuff that you can use as part of your follow up, but you can come up with your own, it's fine. Yeah, so that's how you do it. That's how you convert Fisbos. Then it's just a matter of working it diligently every day. This is not something you just do once and forget it. This is part of your routine, like taking a shower, brushing teeth. You contact new Fisbos. You follow up with the existing Fisbos. Some will end up listing with you. Yeah. Pam has a question, where in DC is the class? The class will be near the Ronald Reagan Airport in an area of Washington DC called Crystal City in Hyde Regency. We have a special discount that we negotiated with the hotel because you guys are my students. Once you register and get your ticket in the mail, you will also get a link where you can book your hotel. Groovy. Akila says, great advice. Well, thank you. Robin wants to know, Borino, will this be recorded? If something came up for me, it better be good, Robin. <laughs> yes, it will be recorded. All right. Carla says, thank you. You're very welcome. 
All right, and I wanted to read you a comment from Keith, Keith Coleman from uh, Azil Park, Florida. My goal was to call 10 for sale by owners tonight. I took a long pause after number eight. Why? Because I now have a new client. Thanks, Borino, for the push. See? Out of 10, one client. Now, my expectations, and again, no guarantees, no false promises, you know me. I don't bullshit you. But my expectations from every student who takes the Fizborino system is to do 25% conversion. That's my expectation. If you're not doing 25%, you're fucking it up somewhere. You're screwing up the system somewhere. That means out of four Fizbos you put on the system, one should be a listing or more, but minimum one. So the question is, can you put four Fizbos on a follow-up weekly? If you want a listing a week, do four Fizbos a week weekly. Now, not, not contacting, because some of them will be jerks, some of them will be unrealistic, not motivated, whatever. But those that you do decide to put on follow-up, at least one, at least one, should be a listing. Cool? Jason Fazio, I had buyers asking me to give up part of my commission in order to make the deal happen. Pros and cons. If I do, I guess less dollars now show weakness. If I don't, I might get nothing. Jason, this is a tough one. I've heard that 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. Your thoughts. Here are my thoughts. I've done both. There were times where I would give in and rather close the deal and get a few thousand dollars than zero, because you're right. Better to get five, six, seven thousand dollars than nothing. That is true. I occasionally would even discount my commission, especially at the beginning, because I was trading with the seller their trust for my uh, lack of experience. And I thought that was a fair deal. If they trusted me enough, even though I was not experienced, I was willing to give them a good deal. That was the trade, and I was cool with that. Later, I stopped doing that, because I had enough experience and enough deals and enough skill to justify full commissions and many times even more than a full commission. But with this kind of stuff, if it's just expected, if the buyer is a dick, if the money would really not make a difference, they just want a deal, then I would say, fuck you, no, I'm not going to do it. It really comes down to your relationship with your clients. Are you perceived as just another salesperson that can easily be replaced? Or are you perceived as a high status agent? Are you perceived as somebody who is just transactional, provides little value that anybody else can do? Or are you perceived as somebody unique, who they need to qualify to, who they need to fight to work with? That's an important distinction. And what it really comes down to is how do you feel about yourself? Here's what I believe. The moment I stopped discounting my commissions wasn't because of anything else other than I made a mental decision that I'm a high status agent and this is what I'm worth. Now, there's a side note to that. That's why I won't tell you guys, don't work with buyers. Buyers are fuckers. They will drive you crazy. They will waste your time. You will invest a lot of time, a lot of emotional and mental energy. You put a lot of work and effort without any guarantee to get paid. And if you do get paid, they will still ask for discounts and kickbacks. So don't work with buyers. Get a buyer's agent. So in the end, it really comes down to your judgment, Jason. Use your judgment. What is really your relationship with that client? And would it be impacted? Will they really pull the plug on the deal? Does, that house, does the house really matter to them so little that they're willing to walk away with a few hundred dollars? Or is it because they don't see value in what you do for them? Now, this is not something you give them a list. Here is what I've done for you. Look at that, Mr. Buyer or Mr. Seller, Mr. Client. You owe me all the money. I'm not giving you shit. It doesn't work that way. It is a perceived value. It is how they perceive you. Okay, and then do a little soul searching. Was there something in my communication, in my interaction with them, that triggered this, that lowered my status to the point where they walk in and ask for a discount? I mean, think about it this way. Would you ever, I like to shop at Nordstrom's. Not because I'm a snob, but because I just like their service. You know, they have the closed door shopping where they make you an espresso and there's nobody in the store and you pick shit and whatever. I like Nordstrom's. But I would never dare to walk into Nordstrom's and see a nice shirt for $150 and say, I'll buy that if you sell it to me for $100. They'd say, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> JC Penny next door. You know what I mean? It's a perception. Nordstrom has a certain perception of high quality, high value, high end stuff. What kind of perception do you send out verbally and non-verbally? 
geez, goes back to the stuff we're going to work on in DC. A lot of it has to do with how you communicate, verbally, non-verbally. And a lot of it has to do with your mental state, how you perceive yourself, how you feel about yourself. Are you desperate for money? Are you desperate to close the deal? Do you need the money just to make, you can make your mortgage payment? Or is it no big deal? Do you bring enough to the table to feel good about yourself and about your abilities to deliver? Yeah? So ask these questions. And those answers will clearly tell you what to do in this and any other situation that's similar to this. All right, Jace, did I answer your question? Are we good? Roxy has a question. Looking forward to having you down here, Roxy, in DC in, in October. Any YouTube videos training on the expired listing campaign? There is. If you go to my YouTube channel, this is the first place where you can uh, find coaching on expired listings. You can simply type Borino and my channel will pop up. There it is. And to scroll down here, you'll see an entire section on expired listings. So that's the first place. This is the listing university. Everybody who gets the system, whether it's the Fisborino or the Expired Plus, you will also have membership to the listing university where all the recordings, all the sessions, training is posted, but also where the systems are. So this is the Expired Plus system. And there are five videos, as you can see, the quick start that will walk you through the system. There's the overview of the system, then part two is the package, what goes into a package to an expired listing, how to quickly put one together. Video number three is in about an hour and something session on Q&As, most frequently asked questions about the expireds and about the expired plus. Video four is the follow-up, how to set up your follow-up that includes how to do the postcards. And then video five is the guarantee. We take apart the guarantee. So that is where you find it. So just log into the Listing University, go to the expired system, and you should be good to go, Roxy. The postcards are part of the expired plus sequence. You pre-order them, you stamp them, and whenever the postcard comes in a sequence, you slap the address on it, your assistant does, and it goes out. So that's how the follow-up works. Juan has a question. How do you convince a seller to list with you now when you are a pro and have these skills, but before when you list with, when you first meet with them two years ago, you didn't know anything or have a track record? Now you do, but they listed with somebody else even after you were in touch and kept listing with other BS agents that can't get the job done. Now they listed with it for rent, again with somebody else. They are socially friendly with you, but never give you a chance professionally or say anything before they relist. Great question, Juan. How do you approach somebody where you started at the beginning and you were a new agent, low status agent, and now you're a rock star? Watch the seller's behavior. Rather than listening to their words, look at their actions. Are their actions consistent with a seller who is highly motivated who needs to sell? Yes or no? Just analyze their actions. And it's actually really simple. It's very easy to read. These folks don't really need to sell. Somebody who needs to sell, who has a high desire to sell, I call it high uh, core driving emotion, high intense emotion they have to sell the property and live somewhere else. It is always the driving force. The intensity of that emotion determines their motivation. These folks clearly have all the time in the world. Selling the house is not that important to them. And the biggest fallacy you've been told that you can convince somebody otherwise. Bullshit. Bullshit. It doesn't work that way. If they don't have a core driving emotion, if there's no clear benefit, either pain or pleasure, that's driving them to unload this. And this is the same for investors. This is the same for non owner occupied. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. If there is no pain, if there is no pleasure, you cannot install that. You can emphasize it, you can point it out, you can work with it if it's there. You can sometimes even amplify it by just shining a spotlight on it. A lot of the stuff we're going to work on in DC will be that. How do you discover what it is? Because once you know that, it's like having a remote control. It's like having a remote like this to their mind. Because then you know which button to push to amplify what they're already feeling, what they're thinking. But if it's not there, you cannot put it there. Okay? So now what do you do with them? I would sit down with them or have a social conversation with them where you just do a heart to heart. Be completely open and honest. You need to find out what is their core driving emotion, what is the real benefit of selling the property. It's never a feature, it's always an emotion. And they will first give you, well, we want to live in a safer neighborhood. We need a bigger house. We need a smaller house. Those are just surface reasons. The real reason is underneath it. 
and it can be prestige, safety, love, connection, peace of mind. There are about 18 of them, 15 to 18 core driving emotion. Okay? Your job, Juan, as a master communicator is find out what it is. And here's the cool thing about this process. Two things will happen simultaneously. One, they will get clarity as well. And two, it will give you tremendous power to influence them now. They need to get clear. What is it that they're really trying to do and why? Because many times you've encountered sellers like that. They don't know what the fuck they're doing and why. They think they do. And then you bring a good offer and they're like, nope, we're not taking it. Has it ever happened to you? And you ever wonder, why? What the hell is wrong with these people? This is a great offer. That's what's happening. There was not enough clarity. There was not enough real understanding of what they're trying to do. There was surface, but not underneath. So it needs to be the deep core driving emotion that drives them. The desire to live somewhere else or sell the property for whatever reason. So one, find out what it is. Find out how intense it is. And then find out if you're a match. And the way you find out if you're a match, you never chase. What you're trying to do here, Juan, which is the worst thing to do, because real estate is like dating. The moment you start chasing, the other becomes the prey, desired, wanted. You're the prize here. You're the expert. You're the one who has all the answers and who knows how to get it done for them. You must be the one to be sought after, to be, to be wanted. And that happens through communication. So sit down with them, have a chat with them. Don't be attached to the outcome. What I feel from your comment is a little hint of desperation. How the fuck did they want to list with me? We're good friends and I'm a great agent. They should be listing with me, bastards. <laughs> right? <laughs> so back off. It's okay. If they don't list with you, be okay with it. What you need to really shift in your head is the scarcity mentality. And here's why. There will be over 5 million properties sold in the United States this year. Let me repeat that. There will be over 5 million did you get that? Five million transactions closed this year. There's plenty of business around you. Don't ever get stuck on one property, one listing, one client, one commission. Fuck it, don't. Do the best you can. Be passionate, sure. But don't get attached. Don't get stuck on one. Always look for more. Because if you have 10, 12, 15 good listings on the market, if you have five, six transactions on the contract, if you have three or four listing appointments lined up this week, if one bombs, if one explodes, one cancels, no big deal. But if you have one listing appointment a month, do you think the tone, the delivery, the connection would change? The dynamic would change? Of course. You'd be desperate to get that. Don't ever get desperate in dating, in relationships, or in real estate. Because there's plenty. Now, to experience the plenty, of course you got to have some systems in place that will require active prospecting, that will require daily lead generation. But even one good lead a day, accumulated, will result in appointments, will result in listings and in commissions. Why shouldn't it? There's plenty. Está bien? All right. <laughs> you guys liked it, huh? <laughs> Tom wants to know, is there a different login to the new listing university? Yes, there is, Tom. We redesigned the site. There's a new login. If you haven't received it, please email us at borino at expiredplus.com and we'll set you up with access, okay? Sean says, we are in a heavy seller's market and I'm using the FISBO system. However, the FISBOs are selling fairly fast on their own for the last three months. Is there anything I can change in this approach to assist in getting more listings? Our expired listings have dried up over the last three months also. Sean, there is not much you can do if they're selling on their own. It's just a sign of times. And yes, there are certain areas where their demand is so high that all the FISBO has to do is stick a sign in the front yard and the property will sell. Maybe they put it on Craigslist. So you can't prevent them from selling on their own. I mean, think about it. Put yourself in a seller's position. Would you pay somebody five, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 if you know you can do this yourself and save the money? Would you pay somebody else? Of course not. Nobody would. If you know you own a commodity where the demand is so high that you don't need somebody to find a buyer for it, you can do this on your own very quickly and save substantial amount of money. So it just makes sense for them to do it. So there is not much you can do. One thing I would suggest, and this is the exception, find out if property is listed net more on average than property sold by owner. That's the differentiating factor. So do a little analysis of the data. Dig deep, and this will require maybe half a day of, of digging. 
But find out because statistically, according to the National Association of Realtors, the average difference is somewhere around $40,000 in favor of properties listed. Every year, on average, properties sold for sale by owner sell for significantly less than properties listed. Even after the seller pays commission, the seller who listed with an agent gets more, on average, statistically. So do a little homework, because if there is an approach, it would be the approach that matters to the seller, which is what? The bottom line. So if you can come in, this is Mr. Seller, more power to you. If you can save the commission, that's absolutely great. However, just be aware that the property listed has a good chance of netting more even after you pay a commission. Why don't we sit down for a few minutes and explore? What if there was a possibility so that you can put more cash in your pocket even after you hire an agent who can trust, somebody who's competent who can get the job done and get you more for your property? Would you at least explore it? Why not? There's no downside to that. Why would they turn you down? Either they see the logic in it and the data supports it or they don't. So that would be my recommendation. I have a landing page on Facebook, writes Marco. How much is your home worth? I have had it for about a month now, 110 full leads, 167 partial leads. That's really good, Marco Barsha, by the way. Those are good numbers. Do you have a dialogue that I should use to frame my conversation to promote a healthy, easygoing conversation? Really good question. Also, a lot of phone numbers are dots, so I have been using an email template that has gotten okay results, but do you have an email template letter that you can share with me to help me get more responses? I don't really have a template, Marco, but my approach would be the same. Find out what is their core drive and emotion, focus on trust, focus on conversation. The less template the less uh, formatted and the less strategic, the less cool and the less thought out your email is, the more effective it is. Think about it this way. If your friend who lives in the same neighborhood sends you an email and says, hey Marco, I know you're in real estate, you know, my wife Doris and I are thinking about selling, what do you think? How would you respond to that? Would you send them some long-winded, templated sales marketing pitch? No, it would be a very informal, sure dude, I'd be happy to help. Here's what the properties are going for. Here's a quick overview of what's going on in our neighborhood. Why don't you call me up? Let's grab a cup of coffee and let's talk. That's how you would answer, right? Those are the best emails. Those are the most effective emails. Personal, conversational. Start a conversation in the middle. Pretend that the person requesting the information is a friend of yours and start a conversation in the middle. Rather than the beginning, let me introduce yourself, myself and let me tell you about my company. And you know, a lot of agents do shit like that. Nobody reads it, it's ineffective, and it ruins the relationship from the beginning because you get framed as a salesperson. Start it as an advisor, as a counselor, somebody who's cool, who's helpful, who's a friend. Friendly connection. So come up with an email, and yes, this can be pre-written, obviously, you don't want to reinvent the wheel every single time but modify it slightly so it feels like it comes from a human being, not a machine. Okay? Helpful? Carmela says, great, we missed you while you were on vacation. Vacation was a lot of fun, by the way. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, Roxy had a question about the Infusion Lab Coats, uh, which is the big group, is doing a three-day conference in Miami Beach, in Miami, in, um, I think, West Palm Beach. Ritz Carlton. I will be one of the speakers, featured speakers there, and I'm really excited. Roxy wants to know if this is going to be just a rah-rah motivation or will there be some substance? It will be both. Of course, there will be some inspiration. Of course, there will be some of the pumping and the usual stuff, which I kind of enjoy because we all need a little boost once in a while. But there will be a lot of meat and potatoes as well. For example, I will teach you an advanced strategy how to convert an expired, new or old, into a listing within 48 hours. Very intense strategy, a lot of hands-on stuff. Plus, we will do a breakout session where we'll actually implement it. You will get on the phone, you will get on an email, you will start texting, you will do all that stuff that it takes to lock in these leads and listings. And a lot of the other sessions will be from folks who really know what they're talking about, who really know how to teach you how to do that stuff, and who are doing that stuff. There'll be panels, and there will be sessions, and there'll be Q&A sessions with people who are in the industry right now doing some pretty cool stuff and you will see the results they're getting with that cool stuff. So this is not fluff, this is not theory, this is really hands-on. I highly recommend come and join us. Now, DC would be my first choice because you're gonna actually learn a core uh, skill that is essential in this business, how you communicate. And there's gonna be that small group in class. But the second choice, of course, come to the Fusion. I think it's gonna be an outstanding event. Do, do both, that's what I would do. Surround yourself with like-minded people, with successful people who do or are striving to do what you're trying to do. 
So I think Fusion will be really good. Highly, highly recommend it. I will talk about it more as we get a little closer to it. Okay? Andy has a question. What if you're brand new and can't get to DC? Do you have any other training like that online or on CDs? Andy, oh, I don't because it is a very different experience to watch something on video and as opposed to being in a classroom with me for two full days of doing this in a very intense way. And I'm very good at teaching this stuff. I'm very good at breaking it down so you get it and you can implement it. So the fact that you can't be in DC, I don't buy that. I think you could. Here is how we can test it, Andy. Do this game, little game with me. Seriously, just play along. Imagine I take out a check for $100,000 in your name, cash it right now. But I'd say, but you have to be in DC on October 3rd to pick it up in person. Would you find a way to get it? Would you find a way to get your hands on the $100,000 check? If I told you, but you got to be here in DC for two days to earn it, would you? Of course you would. Every single one of you would. You're bullshitting yourself. You're coming up with cockamamie reasons why you can't do fusion, can't do this, can't do that. Bullshit. Because if I tell you, 100 grand yours, but come and get it, you would be here. Now, the stuff I'm going to teach you for two days, is it worth 100,000 or more? I am convinced it is. I am 100% certain it is. I don't guarantee or promise you anything. My lawyer always makes me say that. But I'm sure it is. If you master this stuff, you can totally crush it as an agent, especially as a brand new agent. I struggled and I was homeless for two years. I completely fucked it up till I got it. I wish there was some crazy dude like Borino kick me in the butt and teach me the right stuff the right way. You know what I mean? So don't bullshit yourself. Don't make excuses. We're so used to coming up with bullshit reasons and excuses. Stop! You have a great opportunity to build a phenomenal business for yourself with all the financial freedom, with all the beautiful things and cars and homes and vacations and all the good stuff you want. It's all out there for you. And there are agents doing it right now. But what it requires is two things. Three, really. Mindset. You believe you can do it. You deserve it. Two, right tools. You have to have the right tools, including the communication, which we're going to work on. And the skill. That means you know how to use those tools. Because even if I get you the fanciest, most beautiful tool, if you don't know how to use it, it's not going to work. You have these three in place. Sky's the limit. Why not? So stop giving yourself or me the excuses. I mean, I don't really care. We sell it out. We sell it out every year because it's a small group and it's a really good class. Selling it out is not a problem. But I feel like you reaching out and making this comment is really your way of asking for help, asking for a little boost, for a little push. That's what I'm offering you right now. That's what it takes. Okay? Kevin has a question. Borino, Kevin again, any recommendation of what I should do immediately to reconnect with previous clients and current potential clients that I lost touch with past three, four months due to military service? Some are sure not very happy with me. Kevin, uh, really good question. Outstanding question. That's the one I was looking for and I lost it in the, in, the, in the comments, but it is here. How do you reconnect? Number one, they care and remember a lot less than you think they do. Trust me, it's not like they sit around the dinner table going, I wonder what the hell happened to Kevin. Hasn't called us in a while. Have you heard from Kevin, Jane? No, I, I haven't either. I don't know what the fuck happened to Kevin. Nobody cares. You're not that important. <laughs> Nobody is that important. I'm not that important. You don't talk about me with your wife and your kids. When I went on vacations for four weeks, nobody fuckers did. You forgot all about me. Tell the truth. I know you. <laughs> and that's normal. So number one, they forgot all about you. And that's okay. You are where you are. Absolutely reconnect with all your sphere, everybody you know, your past clients, your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, everybody. Here's why. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 35, over 35 million Americans will move this year. Huge number of people, 12%. So let's just say for the sake of easy math, I'm not the greatest in math, as you already know. Let's say you have 200 people in your sphere. That includes everybody you know. You know, your college buddies and your neighbors and your friends and your spouses, co-workers, everybody. You can come up with about 200 people easily, right? Now, out of those, statistically, based on the Census Bureau numbers, 24 will move in the next 12 months. But here's where it gets even better. Those 200 know another at least 200. Now you're exponentially growing the potential source of referrals and business. The trick is, of course, you have to reconnect with them or connect with them, number one. And number two, maintain that connection. So here's what I would do. I would simply pick up the phone and I would have, again, just like I was talking to, uh, to I was talking about connecting with the potential leads you get online, same concept. 
have a friendly conversation with them. This is another human being. If you approach it as a salesperson, as a realtor soliciting referrals on business, who do you know that is thinking about selling in the next 12 months? Fuck off, who wants that? Don't do that. I had a friend named Robert, good guy, great friend. We were selling real estate together. Hang out, party, awesome life, good times. Then we kind of drifted apart. I went to another office. He stayed with an old office. He found a girlfriend. They were getting married. So we lost touch. I don't know, maybe a year or two years later, I get a call from Robert. Hey, wanted to reconnect with you. Why don't you come by? We'll have a little dinner, grab a bite to eat and have a drink at our house. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Missed my friend, right? I pull up to their house and there's a whole bunch of cars there already. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought it was just going to be us, old buddies reconnecting. I got to meet his new wife and all that. Turned out to be a fucking Amway meeting. He got through his now wife, tangled in some multi-level marketing bullshit, and lured me into an Amway meeting. Now, instead of having a friend, I was part of a, list, uh, a, part of a sales presentation for Amway. Hated it. And it ruined my friendship. So don't do that. Don't ruin the connections and friendships and, and bonds you have with people around you. Don't need to. There's plenty of business around you. There are plenty of people who need your help. So connect with them as a human being. So the phone call will be something like, uh, hey, Kev, it's Borino. I know we lost touch. I was gone for three months or like I would say I was on vacation last month. Just wanted to touch up, uh, touch base with you, catch up with you. How was your summer? Good summer? Did you guys have a good time? Where did you go? Awesome. Well, just want to let you know if you need any help, if there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. Cool? Cool. That's all you got to do. Maybe it's going to be a longer conversation. Maybe you, you, you will talk about something personal. Maybe they even talk about real estate. But if they don't, it's okay. What you want is a connection with that person. What you want is a bond with that person. Trust. The real estate part will come. Maybe. Not from all, but from some. Statistically, of course. But it's going to come down to the same thing. They like you, they trust you, they respect you. So here's the secret to referrals. And we're going to wrap up with this. They need to know four things about you. Every single person in your sphere and build that list, expand that list, grow that list. Very important. Great source of business. Number one source of business in the United States is referrals. No other marketing, advertising, or any other strategy comes even close. More people generate listings through referrals than any other way. So you should nurture these connections because they're worth a lot of money. But here it is. They need to know who you are, what you do, how to get in touch with you, and why they can trust you. Focus on these four things. So everybody needs to know who Kevin is, how to get in touch with him, what he does, and why they can trust you. Cool? So work on that. Nurture that. Social media helps, phone calls help, visits help, having a cup of coffee, barbecues, parties, any social interaction is good. Está bien? All right, my friends. We're going to wrap up this session. It went a lot longer than I thought it would, but I appreciate all your comments and all your questions. We're going to do one pretty soon again. Your Coach Barino, thank you very much for being here today. For those of you who have signed up and come to DC, I can't wait to work with you. For those of you who are going to the Fusion in Miami, can't wait to meet you in person and shake your hands. It's going to be awesome. Some of you are doing the boot camp with me. We're starting at the end of October as well. And it's going to be a busy, busy season, busy fall and busy winter. Looking forward to it. Making sure that you got plenty of leads, plenty of listings, plenty of commissions, good lifestyle. If there's anything I can do, if you have questions, if you need to reach out, need to communicate with me, I'm just an email away. Fire off an email to borino at expiredplus.com or just post it right here on Rockstars and we'll be in touch. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Your coach Borino wishing you an awesome rest of the Wednesday and I'll talk to you real soon. Take care, Rockstars. I'll talk to you. Let's go get them. Bye, everybody.